So hey everyone, so it's been a few days since I watched Superman Returns um, again, rewatched it. I'm I'm getting a Superman beanie, like I said, it's uh, I think it's shipped today. I was gonna have a date today. Uh, a potential date. Why is this sticker on here? Potential date with this really cute guy, but um, yeah, and turn up and be like that. Never say, oh yeah, not for me and stuff. I know very well that they're gonna just either call it off or not respond. So. I'm used to being alone anyway. But I wanted to talk a little bit about Superman. Superman Returns. I got a bacon burger from Dairy Queen. A small. I think this is cheesecake. I think. This is a cheesecake blizzard. Some large iron rings. I'm not sure how large these will be. Maybe. Well, yeah, Superman. So I used to really like Superman. I had, um, when Superman Returns came out, I had like those little action figures and stuff. And then I had like a, almost like a doll like figure of Superman. Brandon Ruth, Ralph Superman. And. I was actually watching some clips of uh, Gene Hackman as Lex Luthor. And there's some quotes that they say in Superman Returns again. They said in previous Superman, a uh, previous, like the original Superman movie. <clears throat> I guess so. Oh. Um, Ken Spacey as Lex Luthor is amazing in it, and he says um, that Superman's really good at swooping and catching the bad guys, but he's not really good at doing court dates and stuff. So, in the movie it opens up um, where Superman um, tries to go to his home planet because astronomers said that there's some stuff left from his home planet and it's, they found some stuff from it. And I guess it's a sequel to Superman 2, so they ignore Superman, that's root beer by the way, they ignore Superman 3 and 4. Um, that's good. I was going to order Burger King, but uh, um, have to order Dairy Queen. And it's a shame I'm never going to have that date. I always know. Everyone's exactly the same.
And Lois Lane has a piece that she wrote when he was gone that Why the World Doesn't Need Superman, a, an article piece in a newspaper. So, the plans of Lex Luthor are to have land off of Metropolis. And once that happens, everything blacks out, and it could potentially drown all the people in Metropolis with doing that because he goes over to um, the Fortress of Solitude. Um, they get the crystals and um, eventually go into a museum and get kryptonite. And then one of his lady friend, um, henchmen, um, little side girl there, she's sad. She doesn't really want to be a part of Lex Luthor's thing and actually helps out Superman a little bit. <clears throat> she's like, I, I was going to pretend that my brakes were cut. You didn't actually have to cut my brakes, and then she's gonna slap him, and then he held her, held her wrist, and said, "Well, yeah, of course I, I, I had to, because every man knows a woman is faking it, especially Superman." And I don't know where I just lost interest in Superman. I think because he's. Um, just too good at everything, and um, I don't know. The whole taking off the glasses, putting them back on, it's like, oh, I don't know who you are. And even watching um, Batman vs. Superman with uh, Lawrence Fishburne playing, playing Barry, uh, not Barry White, uh, Perry White? Yeah, Perry White. To some of the things that he says, it's just hilarious. Just like, what did uh, Clark Kent say? He said, uh, yeah, but the, the, the Daily Planet stood for something. It's like, yeah, not, it, if it was 1938, it's not 1938 anymore. 1938 being that that's when Superman came out. It was 1938. It's made by Jerry Schuster and Joel. Um, Jerry Schuster, Jerry Schuster, Joe Schuster, Jerry Siegel, Jerry Siegel, oh, Joe Schuster, and Jerry Siegel. I think that's the, the name. I know it. I know it. And then for villains, I'm not sure who came up with the villains eventually. I can't afford to order food online all the time, but it's nice when I can. It just sucks I can't share it with anybody. So, yeah, and um, Frank, Anella, uh, Frank Anella, I think his name, Angela, plays Perry White in Superman Returns. Um, Jimmy Olsen. So I know I know some Superman characters, but I've always I've always liked Batman. I've always liked Spider Man. I've always liked Wolverine. I don't know. It's just um, Superman's just not a favorite of mine. But I did order a black and white Superman beanie. It looks like the Superman dead suit that they did not use in Justice League. But it's like, why Superman? Why are you in a Superman beanie? Well, because I have a Batman beanie. I'd get another Batman beanie if there's different sim different uh, types of symbols. I have a Flash beanie. I have my black and white beanie. It looks like Beetlejuice. I probably have at least like 20 of them.
nice moot bang. Talking about Superman. And, Super, and Superman has a son. And, and they don't... I'm not sure they know. They, they didn't even really take it off or do anything with it after that for Superman Returns. But... There you go. Um, and then it wasn't really his son, but then that was his son in the end. Because Lois well, was um, going to get married to another, or, well, Perry White's um, nephew. Was his name Richard? Yeah, Richard, yeah. And what threw me, what threw me off in, um, Super, who always threw me off in Superman Returns is James Marsden played uh, Richard in that movie. And he played Cyclops in X-Men. So he was in, you know, he was in a Marvel movie and he was in a DC movie. And that always throws me off when, that, when they do that stuff like that. I think James Marsden's pretty good. Um, but the, the highlight of the movie is really um, Kevin Spacey. It starts out, he's um, basically taking away all these women's money who are like old and eventually on their deathbed and then he inherits their money and then he buys like a yacht with it or something. It's just crazy. And then they're, they're pounding the door for this lady. Like, they don't. She doesn't love. He doesn't love you. He's a monster. Blah blah. And it's crazy to think that Lex Luthor is his main villain. Just like how Batman's main go-to is Joker, but then he has so many other villains. With Superman, I only know. Maybe almost a handful of his villains. He's got like he's got Lex Luthor, he's got Bizarro, he's got Doomsday, he's got Brainiac, he's got um, Brainiacs, um, Metallo, Metallo. I think I think I've named probably about like five. So that's basically the only ones I know. Superman. Yeah, uh, Lex Luthor, Brainiac. Bizarro, Doomsday, and Metallo. Oh, and I think, what is it, uh, Mr. Big League? He's like, or, ah, he's like a tiny guy or something, I can't, um, Mixel Big League or something. I remember, I, I played the Superman game, Superman Returns, too, for the PlayStation 2, and it came out. Destruction Ahead. Where did Clark? Where are you, Clark? Oh, oh, where, does he, where does he go? It's like clicks his heels three times and goes to Kansas, I suppose. With, um, Batman versus Superman. And also, do you say there? Uh, like wake up, Smallville. Wake up, Smallville. I, I laughed pretty pretty hard the first time hearing that in the theater when I saw Batman vs Superman. But I'm not a fan of Jesse Eisenberg as as Lex Luthor. Not a fan. I guess it's a different interpretation, but come on, he's not supposed to be the Riddler or the Joker, just crazed up like that. Yeah, I mean, Lex Luthor um, is crazy, but he's definitely sane. Um, I mean, he's got like a big, brilliant mind, so. I don't know why they went on that, on that, um, on that route, but. <clears throat> yeah, God, this is filling, holy shit. I saw a black, not Blackburn. God, I'm stolen my words. I saw a Brightburn 
last year. It must have been over a year ago already now. It's sort of like this Elseworld story of if Superman just really didn't have the good morals and um, just went rogue as a kid and was bullied and picked on and kind of ostracized as a, as, a, as a young age and then just ended up killing everybody. And then there's that thing in Superman, or Batman versus Superman, where Batman has this fear that Superman has the power to wipe out the human race and that there's a 1% chance that that could happen and well, I gotta kill him because, you know, put an end to his existence because he, you know, what if he just goes unhinged? And then Alfred says he's not our enemy. But Batman doesn't know that. I mean, Bruce doesn't know that. Until um, he's trying to get Bruce to help him with his, his mom that's captured and gonna die. Um, his adopted mother Martha Kent and then which was brilliant I like that people make fun about that all the time just the whole thing that both Batman and Superman's name uh, mom's names are Martha it's like why did you say that name it's like it's like I gotta say Martha it's like why did you say that name and then Lewis comes in and it's like well that's his mother's name and he stops because he realizes that oh you know this guy has a mom too and he's fighting for something too and um, you know, there's more to that. It's like he kind of relate, I guess, relates to it and um, just realizes that things have just gone too far. And um, yeah, you, just, you just see it in Ben Affleck's acting when, when it's done with that. I, I, I love Ben Affleck as Batman. But is he... Is he the best Batman? I don't know. I mean, I, I, I liked him. He was very... Medicine and thrill. I just, I wish they they did better. And and Warner Brothers is really known for for screwing up stuff like that. They screwed up with Tim Burton's Batman after the second movie. Um, not because I mean I liked it. Uh, not because it was too dark. Because that's how Batman's supposed to be. Supposed to be dark. But they screwed up because they were gonna do a third one potentially. Um, I think it was called Batman Continues or something. And Robin, Robin Williams was going to be the Riddler, and Two Face was going to be in, and and, and stuff. I, th I think I don't know, but like Billy D. Williams was going to be Two Face, and that didn't happen. Then I went to Joel Schumacher, rest in peace, Joel Joel Schumacher. Yeah, Joel Joel Schumacher, he was an openly gay guy, and he put uh, bat nipples on the suit. I mean, it, it was crazy it was just like bat nipples but he saw uh batman and robin as sort of like a greek like um as as legendary and he i think he had an interview talking about like elvis as a legendary and he saw like people like greek statues greek uh statues that would just you know have the thing so but he's like i like nipples so let's put it on here I kind of want to revisit those Joel Schumacher movies, even though they're not super great. I mean, Batman Forever was a lot of fun. But, you know, Jim Carrey's a little too over the top for me sometimes. Um, some people really love him. I mean, I used to a lot. Um, he's kind of different now, in a sense. Yeah. And Tom Lee Jones, that's not how he acts in any movie. He didn't even really want to be in there, I don't think. And it goes to show that people that are in those movies, like Batman, for the most part, they're just there for a paycheck, and I don't think they're a fan of any of, this, of the comic books or the source material or anything. So it's a little bit of a, a, bit of a drag when that happens. But you see Ben Affleck, who stepped away, and he was actually a fan of, of Batman, and he, he only played uh, Daredevil because he felt like he wasn't going to get the role as Batman. And then he was then kind of 
you know, contra controversial movies, you know, Daredevil and, and Batman vs. Superman. I stepped away because it's so high. This is not good. I'm not going to do this anymore. Alright, so. But then you, there might be some really crazy redneck people out there or woohoos that may think that Justice League and Suicide Squad were amazing films. <laughs> yeah, this is so messy. It's probably gonna melt right now. I don't even know what flavor this is. It doesn't taste like cheesecake. Holy fuck, this is expensive. I gotta deal with this pretty soon. Yeah, this is messy. But a lot of people don't like Superman because it's very simple and not a lot of action. But it, it's still somewhat in the same world, even though there's different actors. Um, but it's, it's a direct sequel to Superman... Superman 2. And Superman 1 and 2 were very simplified and basic. So, I mean, if you want to watch something nauseating with, with action, watch Ban of Steel, because it was just like 30 minutes of like just going into the building, right? What really threw me off in, in Man of Steel was when Pa Kent died in a tornado and yeah, and then this whole thing of, of saying, like, what, should I just let the people die? He's like, well, maybe. I mean, maybe. It's, ah, it's crazy. So, in, a, in that situation, you just let that person die? Because the world's not ready for seeing something, like someone with powers saving people from another planet, who looks like that person who's another human. Yeah, I don't know. When Superman goes up into the mountains there and he sees his dad, he's talking to his dad. I didn't feel it like that. It was still written by Chris Terrio, um, who later co-wrote episode nine, which I really don't like episode nine. But there were some, there was some okay things in episode nine. They could have been more well done if if the sequel trilogy was thought out. But when Kylo Ren talks to Han Solo, his dad, I felt like that was utilized a little bit better. Better, I had more emotion probably because I care more about Han Solo and Kylo Ren than I, you know, do Superman. But. I mean, I, I don't mind Superman sometimes, but, um, definitely not my fave. Um, Batman and Spider-Man are mine, my fave. But I've always, I've always said that they should make a Superman, a really good Superman game, like a, a open world Superman game, but it would have to be an open world because of who Superman is and flying and stuff. They could make like a really good Superman game. Like the Arkham games, that'd be great. And I think they were in development of making a Superman game, but. I don't know if there are any more. Let me know if there's any Superman fans out there. And, um, how you feel on the Superman movie? <laughs> I, I always I liked at the end, at the very end of the movie, just about where Lex Luthor and, I don't even know her name, but she's, she's there stranded on the island with Lex. And it's like, 
Lex throws like a coconut in the in the water. It's like, Lex, we only have six of those. Six? I would trade 300,000 coconuts and one ounce of your blood for one quart of gasoline. It's like, but what would we have to eat? And then he just looks at the dog and, or she's like the little puppy. Because there was like a couple of these little pup, these little weird looking dogs that the, the woman had before he, he confiscated all her money when died and signed away her will money or something. And then I think one of the dogs they ate the one of the other dog and she came in. Um, Lex's like um, little lady friends like, wasn't there two of those? Yeah. Mind over muscle, Miss Lane. Mind over muscle. Whose father is that? <laughs> Richard, are you sure? Um, yeah, I, I think I give, I give Super Superman uh, maybe about three and a half out of five. I think it's I think it's pretty good, and then, um, I don't revisit it as much as I do other other films and movies. But you know, it's it's good. Um, Roger Ebert or whatever um, before he died, I think this was one of the last movies he reviewed it and he gave it a two, right? So three and a half out of five is you know not too bad. Um, Maybe that was it. Um, two and a half, two and a half uh, star is just because uh, Superman is not my go-to for the most part. But there are some elements I like about him, and um, yeah. He's the father of all superheroes. I think there was other comic book related stuff before, and there's Peter Pan before that. Peter Pan was sort of this fairy thing or this angel thing that would take away kids. I don't know. And they came up with these comic books around the time when the World War was happening, so they needed something to look into and do escapism and comic books and for something of uh, what do you call it? A great message. Ah, oh, there's pickles in here, yeah. Yeah, a lot of people died in the war. Mm. What are these onion rings? Hey, there's a lot of onion rings. It gets cold so quickly. Hmm. Yeah, I used to play a lot of Mortal Kombat versus DC Universe, and I played Superman quite a quite a bit. I think Superman. What's my one? Um. But in in Injustice, I played a lot of Flash or Green Arrow. So I find it funny that Nicolas Cage was going to be in talks for doing a Superman movie directed by Tim Burton. That almost happened. Thank God that did not happen. I don't know how that would be. And he was going to have long hair. Nicholas Cage was going to be Superman, and it was going to be weird. You could read about the whole entire script and story online for movies that did not happen. And Superman, I don't know what it was going to be called. I think oh, it was going to be called Superman Lives. Superman Lives. Yeah, that's what it was going to be called. It was really crazy. 
like Tim Burton not even creating his own stories anymore, trying to do like Charlie and Chocolate, or Willy Wonka and Chocolate Factory, and Alice in Wonderland, Batman, Superman, and Thumbelina, who knows. Um, but I'm kind of glad it didn't happen because look at look at uh, Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider was kind of eh, kind of eh, right? I mean, old Ghost Rider is a really interesting character, but um, yeah, the movies were just kind of okay, right? So um, that's all I have time for. This talk about um, Superman. Um, I really, really liked the movie. Um, that was good. Um, you sort of feel for Superman when uh, Lois Lane doesn't miss him anymore and kind of forgets who Clark and Superman is, even though he's, she slept with him and stuff. Um, now I'm going to go edit, edit this video and hopefully... Have enough room to upload it so hopefully this was worth watching you got around to watching the whole thing and i'll talk to you guys next time so bye